Hello, welcome back, week 23. You are on the countdown, guys. Great job hanging in there. All right, so we're continuing our probability experiments. What is probability? The mathematical study of chance. Why are we studying it? To know God's world more and to be understand, able to understand why some things could or could not just happen. So that is, we should know that by now. We're gonna know some good grammar about probability for sure. Our word of the week this week is odds. Odds is the likelihood that your desired outcome will happen compared to the likelihood that it will not happen. And so at the beginning of this week, we're gonna review probability, review why we do it, and then we want to define, um, again, our new grammar, which is odds. So a couple things about odds that's different than probability. So we can review how do we define probability. We define it by our desired outcome over our total possible outcomes. Whereas odds is our desired outcome, my DO, not direct object, um, desired outcome compared to our not desired outcome. And so um, at, you'll see as we work through these experiments, I'll show you examples of what that looks like. Um, so a couple things as our denominator is a little different here um, when we're talking about odds. And we generally write odds with a colon and probability as a fraction. And so those are slight differences. Um, so when you say what are the odds of something, that actually means something different then what is the probability that something will happen? Those are actually a little bit different. So today we're gonna to talk about odds, again, our desired outcome compared to our non-desired outcomes. Um, and then you can talk about our odds even. And so even is when the, uh, the, your the likelihood of your desired outcome happening is equal to um, the non-desired outcomes happening. And so then it's an even distribution or an even odds, which you'll see here in just a minute. It'll make more sense. Okay, so two experiments. Each experiment, you can do class-led first or tutor-led with a class and then break off into pairs. So again, with probability experiments, the more times you do something, the closer your results are to an actual um, probability or a more accurate probability um, of something or the, the more accuracy of your results to matching a probability of something happening. So we're going back to the coin and our good old faithful dice. And so first of all, you're going to do the coin as a class. You're going to just go kid by kid, have them flip the coin, do your heads and tails. Now review, so we talked about the very first week we did probability, we did heads and tails, and we said, what is the probability we're gonna get a heads? Well, that is one, is our desired outcome, out of a possible two outcomes, okay? So our probability of getting a heads is one out of two, okay? So, do, 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 do. So for our coins, the probability is one out of two of getting a heads. Our odds of getting a heads is one is our, um, we only have one heads on our coin. And then how many other outcomes do we have that are not our desired outcome? One. So it's a one, whoops. Well, I can just squish it in there. A one to one odds. So probability is one out of two of getting desired outcome of heads. Odds is one to one. We have a one to one odds ratio of getting heads. So then you can talk about, so this means that the odds of us getting a heads is even. We have a one to one um, odds ratio of getting heads. So you're gonna do it 12 times as a class. You're gonna make a chart however you want on the board, but just give you an idea. Just simple, we're gonna go back to the charts we used in um, week 19, I believe. 
um, of just heads and coins or heads and tails using your coins. So do it on the board 12 times. Divide into pairs or small groups. Have them do it with their own coins 12 times and record their data. At the end of their 12 times, you're gonna come back together and as a class, how many heads did they get? How many tails did they get? And then analyze your data. So coins, how many, what was the probability that we got um, heads, you know, and maybe it'll be 20 out of 40, um, depending on how many times it was done. So 20 were heads out of our total outcome or total number of times we did it, 40, um, which would then, you know, come down to one half, um, or it should be close to a half. And then your odds. So how many times did we get heads? compared to how many times do we not get heads? And they should be pretty close. So it should be more like 20, 20, 20 to 20, um, close to that 50%. Again, a one-to-one -one odds ratio. So do it as a class, do it in groups, analyze all of your data points together, and hopefully it'll be pretty class, be pretty close. But like we talked about last week, sometimes you do have outliers and you just happen to have random results that don't match up at all to your probability or odds. And you can talk about that and say, <clears throat> that's life. And sometimes that happens. Um, so that is odds with the coin. Now we're going to take it a little step further and we're going to do the dice. So again, our dice has six sides. I did not mention um, for the coins, just to make it fun. Um, our guide encourages um, dividing the class into halves. So half of the class for the coin experiment will be the heads group. The other half will be the tails group. And then whoever gets the most, so we discussed we have even odds. So everybody has an even chance of winning. Whoever gets the most gets a prize. I'm thinking I'm going to do like little small erasers or something, not food. Um, so whichever half wins... Um, then they get a prize. Um, but you're starting off, this is an even competition. They have equal rights or equal possibilities, probability, odds <laughs> of it happening. Okay, now we move on to the coin. Sorry, I can't talk today. The dice. Okay, so you're going to do the same thing. You're going to start off as a class doing this experiment 12 times as a class, and then you're going to break off into those same pairs or same small groups. We've got our dice chart again, just to make it easy. So you give each of those pairs their charts, a pencil, a coin, and a dice. So they have everything they need for the day. Um, so those pairs or small groups will then record their data on here. So this time you say, first time we had a coin, we had equal odds. This time we're gonna divide the class to now group A, you win, if the dice is a one or a two. Group B, you win if we get more three, four, fives, and sixes, okay? <clears throat> so group A wins if you have a one or two. Group B wins if you have a three, four, five, or six, all right? So let's just look at this for a minute. What is our probability that you'll get a one or two? Well, our total possible outcomes two of them, out of how many possible outcomes, sorry, our desired outcomes over our total possible are six. <clears throat> now, the odds ratio of getting those two numbers, a one or a two, would be, um, so our desired outcomes, two still, colon, to our non-desired outcome or all the other outcomes is four. So probabilities, two out of six, Odds ratio is two to four <clears throat> that we're going to win this, okay? For the oldest class, you could break it down to a one to two. You could tell them we reduce it like we do fractions. Okay, <clears throat> if we look at the group B, the three, four, five, and six group, so we say, what is the probability that your team will win and that we'll get more three, four, fives, or sixes? Well, the probability, our desired outcomes, we have four possible numbers out of our total possible numbers of six. 
our odds ratio is four is our desired compared to our not desired two. So we have a four to two odds ratio that group B will win. <clears throat> then you can talk about, was well, this competition fair? Um, yes or no? And is it an even odds ratio? No, it's not, but that's part of the fun of it. And so it helps them to understand um, what odds are. It's not always a one-to-one -one situation. Their life, that would be nice if that were true in life. Sometimes the odds are stacked against us. Um, so then you do it again as a class, then break off into their groups, calculate all your data together. And so you have lots of result points to analyze and make up your result probability and odds, and then um, see how it compares to um, the beginning probability or odds ratios you came up with. Then if you have time, or even at the beginning, if you wanted to start with, talk about odds in life. So if we think of Bible stories like David versus Goliath, you know, what were the odds that David was going to win that? Um, you could compare, you know, the, the men themselves, you know, one was huge, one was covered in armor. Um, one was confident and bold. Um, the other one was a smaller, average-sized guy, young, inexperienced, did not have armor, but had God on his side. So even though the odds were stacked against David, Goliath certainly had a lot more in his favor. With God, all things are possible. So even when the odds of life seem stacked against us, with God, all things are possible in our life. So that is why we always have hope. That is why even when the odds are stacked against us, we do not bow, we do not give way, um, and we can stand firm in confidence um, because we know God is on our side. Have fun.